Shalom. I'm to give a praise on the glory. How about Shem? How shall I be? Shem, Rakai, Kadash. And double honor to the elders and apostles of great most on the top of the truth. And peace, blessing, and salutation to the hope for a letter to the um, Yeah, man, the plagues of Egypt. <laughs> and the night says cricket invasion. But I did <clears throat> a little research. Are crickets a type of locust? <clears throat> As you see, it says grasshoppers and crickets are related and together with a. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Cadids and locusts make up the. Or the um, Ortho, Ortho, Ortho Terra, meaning straight wings. One of the most recognizable features of this group is their ability to produce sounds by rubbing together certain parts of their body. So basically, <clears throat> they're the same thing, but they look different, just like there's different types of cats. Or a different classification of cat. There's different classification of locusts. As you may mention, um, yeah, grasshoppers, crickets, and locusts, all all a part of the same group. And we know that the Lord used locusts as a plague in um ancient Egypt. But yeah, let me play this video here. Flightless insects known as Mormon crickets have now descended on swaths of Nevada. Taking over homes in the city of Elko, Nevada. Blanketing roads, even the local hospital. Some homeowners are using vacuums and power washers to clear out the crickets. Killing the two inch long plump crickets can lead to a smell described as burning flesh. The sheer. <laughs> uh, the reason why I'm laughing at that is because. The, the last plague is the nuclear destruction, man. And people are going to be burnt up. And the smell of burning flesh will be eminent in the air. <clears throat> As the scripture may mention, man. Zechariah. Zechariah 12. No, no, Zechariah 14 and 12. And it says, And this shall be the plague wherever the Lord Yahweh. But Shemahosha will smite all the people that fought against Jerusalem. The flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And the eyes shall consume away in their holes. And the tongue shall consume away in their mouth. So yeah, they're going to be melted. And they're going to smell that burning flesh. <clears throat> Quantity of insects on the streets. Now forcing the Nevada Department of Transportation to use plows and warn of slick roads due to the squashed bugs. It's almost like an oil slick. It, I actually, at this intersection, was coming home, and as I came around the corner, I came around a little too fast, and it, I about ended up in the, in the ditch full of water. It was pretty intense. Outbreaks of Mormon crickets have been recorded throughout history across the West in Nevada, Idaho, Utah, Montana, and Oregon, causing widespread damage to crops and other vegetation. Experts say the crickets have a four to six year cycle and then go door. It's lucky. Uh, I had to pause it real quick, but carry on. For people in Elko, relief can't come soon enough. They just eat because they eat everything. Anything in their path, they'll eat, including each other. Experts say the crickets could plague that region for years until they're brought back under control by predators. <laughs> Look at that. 144. That's what the time is right now. 144. Oh, man. <laughs> Second address. Fifteen. <clears throat> yes, second address 15 <sighs> and 10. He says, Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, being the spiritual Egypt, which 
the name Egypt has been given to America. And the reason why is because of the bondage or the slavery. Because literally, Egypt means, um, what is Exodus? Exodus 20 and 2. It says, I am the Lord, Yahweh, thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So that's what Egypt means, the house of bondage. So <clears throat> when it makes mention of spiritual Egypt, it's talking about the house of bondage being the slavery. Because as the scriptures may mention, Deuteronomy 20 and 16, it says, And the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again. So you see, although we didn't go to the the, the ancient Egypt, when it says he's going to bring you into Egypt again, it means the house of bondage again, but this time in a different land. <clears throat> and it says, With ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwoman, and no man shall buy you. And you see, people would think that that's a contradiction. Because it says you, be, you shall be sold to your enemies and no man shall buy you. <laughs> and that's why the way the Lord has set this book up is, is, is clever, man. It's clever. Because if you go into that word buy, it means to redeem. So when it says no man shall buy you, it means no man shall redeem you. And the reason why no man is able to redeem us is because that's the Lord's job, man. Literally one of his titles is... Isaiah... Oh, where is it? Yeah, here we go, Isaiah 41 and 14. It says, Fear not thou worm, Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, Yahweh, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So, Yahweh is the Holy, it's like Yahweh is the Redeemer, man. And he's the one who's going to redeem us by sending his son, Yahweh Shai, being the Deliverer. <clears throat> And I'm going back to um second address fifteen. <sighs> Actually, you know what? Let me get this real quick. Revelation eleven and eight, and it says, "And dead dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, which the great city is." Um, the daughter of Babylon, or Mystery Babylon, which is America. And it's not talking about actual dead bodies. It's meaning um, they're spiritually dead. They don't have the living waters. They don't have the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding about who they are. So that way, they're, they're spiritually dead. And it says, which spiritually is called Sodom. Yeah, and America was the first one to um, legally give um benefits or make it legal to have an alternative lifestyle and it says and egypt being the slavery because the majority of the israelites were taken to america to serve bondage and the rest was scattered into the different lands and it says where also our law was crucified and yeah man it's lucky, man. I'm a little bit tired, but um, yeah, he was crucified in the way of um his image being changed, his name being changed, um, and also his doctrine. It's been completely changed. They've literally crossed out um Yahweh Shai man, and instead put up a false image. Of some other guy that isn't the Lord. 
And yeah, verse 11 says, But I will bring them with a mighty hand, and I stretch out arm, and I will smite Egypt with plagues as before, and I will, just, and I will destroy all the land of. So like it meant mention, he's going to smite Egypt with plagues as before, meaning he's going to do it again. And like I mean mentioned, America is spiritual Egypt. So the Lord's going to bring those plagues that he did in ancient Egypt to America. And then he, that final plague is going to destroy all the land thereof. And we know this isn't talking about ancient Egypt because literally there's Hamites over there, there's Ishmaelites over there. <laughs> and literally Moab, Moab's over there as well. In Egypt. <clears throat> and carrying on. It says Egypt shall mourn. And the foundation of it shall be smitten. With the plague and punishment. That God shall bring upon it. And yeah man. This is, this is talking about America. This is prophecy right here. <sighs> now let's go to the, the locusts. The locusts. Here we go. <sighs> Exodus 10 and 12 and it says, And the Lord, Yahweh, said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hell have left. So you see what I mean? <laughs> And that guy, he was given an interview. What did he say? He made mention that these crickets, they eat everything in their path, even each other. So you see, they're gonna eat. They're gonna eat everything, man. And it says, and Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and the Lord Jehovah brought an east wind upon the land. All that day and all that night, and when it was morning, the Eastman brought the locusts, and yeah, literally like I, like I also got from on Google, crickets and locusts, they're the same classification, <clears throat> and it says and the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them there were no such locusts as they. Neither after them shall be such. <clears throat> and. <clears throat> now let me continue. It says for they covered the face of the whole earth. So that the land was darkened. And they did eat every herb of the land. And all the fruit of the trees. Which the hell had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees. Or in the herbs of the field. Through all the land of Egypt. So yeah, this was one of the plagues that the Lord did in ancient Egypt, man. And he's doing it again to spiritual Egypt, which that's been given to America. <clears throat> but yeah, literally, let's carry on. And it says, Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron, in, in haste and he said I've sinned against the Lord Yahweh your power and against you and you see <laughs> look at that man so why didn't Pharaoh say I've sinned against our power if the Lord was for everyone he's the God of everyone then why did the Pharaoh say I've sinned against your God and against you See, even then, back then, they knew that the Lord Yahweh was the God of Yahshua Allah, being the Torah child of Israel, being the sons of God. You know what, let me read it again. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord Yahweh, your power, and against you. Now therefore forgive, I pray thee, my sin only this once. And entreat the Lord Yahweh your power that he may take away from me all this death only. 
And it says, and he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord Yahweh. So you see what I mean? <laughs> Pharaoh, Pharaoh knew that the power that Moses and Aaron served is their God. Or should I say, the God of the 12 tribes of Israel, man. The new back then. Oh, this this new thing about um, the Lord's the God of everyone is is a new concept. The the nations knew back then that the Lord was the God of the twelve tribes of Israel. The nations knew back then, and it says um, where was I? And it says, and the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coast of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. <laughs> you see what I mean? The Lord wanted to, to destroy him, man. The Lord's wrath was kindled over the Pharaoh and ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt. Like literally, <laughs> oh man, and, and it's the same thing. It's the same thing for Esau. But we're, we're thinking, why? Why isn't Esau letting us go? Why is he continuing to do all this foolishness? It's because the Lord have hardened his heart, and the Lord wants to execute these judgments, man. And he's going to keep hardening Esau's heart until he's performed the intents of his heart, until his anger. Has been accomplished, man. <laughs> yeah, carrying on verse 20 says, But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. And then this is where um, the, the darkness comes, the, the three days of darkness over the land of Egypt. And um, another thing I wanted to get, because like it makes mention in verse 20 says, But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he will not let the children of Israel go. And it's the same thing with America. It's the same thing with America. Esau, Edom's the modern day Pharaoh. Judah. Yeah, Jeremiah 50 and 33. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives, held them fast. They refused to let them go. So now the Lord's going to have to bring these plagues, man. He's going to have to bring these plagues. And not only that, he's going to have to deliver us. And he's, that's exactly what he's going to do. As he makes mention in um, Jeremiah 16 and 14. The delivery, the deliverance out of the land of, or should I say, the deliverance out of ancient Egypt. Won't be talked about anymore, but the deliverance from out of America and from all the countries <clears throat> where the Israelites have been scattered, being the let of the let, they're going to be delivered, man. They're going to be saved by Yahweh Shem Hal Shai. And that's good to make mention, man. Out of Zion. Yeah, Romans 11 and 26, it says, And so all Israel shall be saved. <sighs> so here, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion their deliverer, and he shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And yeah, their deliverer being Yahweh Shai. And that's who the Lord Yahweh is going to send. Yahweh is going to send down Yahweh Shai, man. And how is Shai going to come down and do what he was destined to do or fulfill his name, which was the deliverer? <clears throat> and like it makes mention um, when the angel was talking to Joseph and Mary, what did the angel say? His name shall be called what? Yahweh Shai. Why? Because he was going to save his people. He's going to deliver them. <clears throat> and that's exactly what Yahweh is going to do. <clears throat> and yeah, that's basically it for the lesson. But yeah, I hope it was edifying. I want to give a praise and the glory. 
Zie hel bij sommige schaar bij sommige dash. En zal er wel.